Hello my soccer universe. I know it's not the most important thing that people are looking at at the moment, but let's review what happened yesterday in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League, you know, just as a maybe a little bit of a distraction and in some cases some happiness for people. Uh is wearing Porto. I had a little struggle picking which team to wear. I didn't want to wear Atalanta again. So I decided, yeah, let's take Porto because I think um, I was really annoyed yesterday uh, at the thought that uh, the com the comedy said that the little Porto um, beat the big Lazio when from the get go for me it was a complete reversal. Uh, while Lazio is a big team in Italy, they are not among the strong teams in Italy uh, this time around. And Porto is such a consistent performer in Europe that I cannot fathom how someone could say little Porto. So I decided it's big Porto and that's why I am wearing Porto. Um, overall, uh, it's very interesting to see how the seeding worked and how many teams went on. I mean, uh, we have five Champions League teams, so demoted teams from the Champions League moving on to the round of 16 in the Europa League. However, on the reverse, we have only three demoted teams from the Europa League move on in the Conference League, which I find very interesting. However, it all suggests that it's still a toss-up. I mean, we have very little data. Also, the other thing is that, um, yeah, this was the first return leg where we didn't have an away goals rule, you know, for a big, we had it already in qualifying. Uh, in a way, so uh, that was also of interest. And the one thing I have to say, I am still um, a little bit sad that the away goals rule got away because the all the technical considerations that can be where a game then that's really on the knife edge can really turn by a goal or not. What we have now is that you know if it's a draw, it's a draw. Before, uh, if it's a draw, it could mean that one team moves on. So uh, in that sense. I do miss the away goals. I thought it was a genius way of avoiding ties and penalty shooters. Well, we got two penalty shooters. Yes, yeah, I guess today. But the one thing I have to say is that the ties tended to stay competitive longer. It had a little bit more of a World Cup feel to it. So I'm, I might get, 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 get around. I mean, uh, for instance, if I take uh, Porto's game, uh, even with Porto 2 1 up under the away goals rule, this would have meant, yeah, that's done, that's settled. Lazio needs to score three goals, that's not gonna, gonna happen. So Lazio only needs to score two goals to make it to overtime. Might kept it a little bit more open in that sense. Uh, I also thought that Dortmund Pro probably thought, yeah, this 4 2 at home uh, was not such a devastating result uh, as it could have been otherwise. So, yeah, pros and cons. I still await the, I'm still awaiting my final judgment on that one. Let's go through the uh, games. We start Europa League and then we go to the Conference League. Um, Dinamo Zagreb. I mean, that game was a snooze fest until a penalty out of nowhere gave Zagreb a one nil lead. Of course, Orzic scoring it at that one in the sixty uh, fifth minute. And then I have to say that Sevilla hung maybe a, a tad too much back. Uh, in, there were chances for Zagreb there. Um, so yeah, but in the, in the end, Sevilla hung on. But a uh, rather disappointing re result from Sevilla, I must say, because you would expect more from them. We talked already a bit Lazio against Porto. Uh, Immobile back in the lineup, and he almost immediately uh, kept, 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 kept. He had, had already a big chance before that. Then Pepe in the build-up is intercepted by Milinko Savic, who plays to Immobile, who has no trouble pulling in, in the internet. And I thought maybe there is the upset. And I really thought that if Lazio would move on against Porto, that this was the upset, not the other way around. Um, that, yeah, maybe it's going to happen. Uh, however, um, Taremi... I uh, got the penalty and I can see why the referee initially gave him a yellow card for fall falling over because the way he falls down, he definitely wanted to fall down. Uh, so that didn't look all that good. But then on the other side, if you look at it, yeah, there is can't, can't, can't you probably have to give the penalty. So Taremi makes it equalizing it, but that actually then spurned Lazio on to attack a little bit more. Um, and that also was a little bit there undoing because uh, the way Uribe was a really, really nice attacking move with a chip from Taremi onto Uribe, 
who then uh, could make it 2-1 for Porto. And as I said, there the away goal rule um, not being being there helped actually again because Lazio knew, okay, we need to score on, 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 on a 2. And it was uh, very much Luis Alberto who could have done that. I mean, with a wonderful shot, he hit only the uh, corner of the woodwork. Uh, very late on in stoppage time, Cataldi gets a goal, but it was a little bit too late. That They would have needed a goal a little bit sooner. The draw was in there, but I think overall Porto was the better team and move, move, move it on. But it was the exciting tie that everyone uh, expected. Now, Atalanta had no trouble whatsoever with Olympiacos. Uh, I really loved how Mele made the goal because uh, the defender already thought that he had, he had cleared the Mele just with the um, tip of his foot slams it in and then of course the emotional moment of the evening was uh, Malinowski scoring two goals and after the first one uh, lifting a short uh, stop war in Ukraine uh, it must have been really really tough for him uh, there and of course he's with his uh, I think his thoughts are more with his countrymen there he then scored a wonderful second goal as well um, I don't necessarily want to comment on the conflict and the thoughts. I mean, it should be pretty clear uh, my position in many ways, but uh, maybe a little bit more uh, on that later. But, you know, Atalanta, no trouble with Olymp Olympiacos. Uh, probably that, that's the goal and that they could have had in the first leg. So uh, Atalanta were that much better than Olympiacos, for sure. Uh, Leipzig against Real Sociedad was a game that very long time looked totally going Leipzig's way. Leipzig were already, in the first game, the better team. They uh, get the lead through a penalty. You know, the, the game was plodding long suddenly the penalty comes. Uh, just, just, just justify so. And then Andre Silva steps, steps up, sees his penalty saved. But the rebound is so wicked going uh, towards, towards goal that Willy Orban can pull, pull it in. Uh, you know, if you want to save it, you want to save it to the outside. So, yeah, safe, great, whatever. And then when Andre Silva with a, a brilliant shot, you know, just run, running along that from far out, taking a brilliant shot, maybe makes sooner you thought Lyle Leipzig is through. But uh, then uh, I think it was uh, Januzaj and David Silva come, coming on. Suddenly there was a little bit more uh, coming from. Real Sociedad and Subi Mendy uh, gets the equalizer. It was not offside or as 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 it called. And then uh, Real Sociedad was full fully there. Had a pretty big chance through uh, a weird header by uh, Sorloth. I mean, if you see that, you think first it's going to the near corner, and suddenly it ends and it's a far corner. The perspective really not playing in favor. And then another penalty for Leip Leipzig. And I can't so much can see why. Um, why uh, it, this is for the defender uh, so annoying because he wants to cut across uh, Nkunku and Nkunku plays, plays the ball in his run, run, running motion. The arm is a little bit out and it hits the... Yeah, it's a penalty by, 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 by law, but I can totally tell, tell understand why this is frustrating. Emil Forsberg puts it away. And then we are already in the late game, Spades against Zenit. And let me put it this way. Uh, uh, it feels weird that Zenit still is allowed to play at the moment, but I understand why this cannot cannot happen at this moment. That you cannot just uh, ban them so quickly. I think that there needs to be a due process going through. And I was thinking, you know, the Yugoslav teams were very quickly uh, expelled from competition, but I think there was also a UN mandate and whatever. So uh, now with the Russia situation, since Russia is on the Security Council of UN, uh, it's probably a harder um, call to get Zenit out of it. The Betis crowd let them know what they think about them. But then on the other side, I'm thinking that this is... Well, I think some of the Russian players, and I don't want to say now anything, I, I could imagine that uh, Artem Zuba, uh, because he always was seemed a little bit more militaristic, but I don't want to put words in his mouth, would actually probably be on support for uh, Russia in, in, in a way. But then there are Brazilian players on Zenit where I think, I think they probably do not, they, they probably feel as bad as others. So um, letting it out all on the Zenit players seems all seems also not quite right to me so yeah but on on, on then it is putin's favorite 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 team so it becomes so complicated to me 
I honestly, and you know, we, we have a meeting, probably the Champions League final will be taken away from St. Petersburg. Um, we already have, you know, we have Gazprom on the Zenit jersey. It, it just felt at this moment awkward, but in a way unavoidable. Um, I could very well imagine that the Russian teams will be um, eliminated. They have to play on neutral sites uh, from the comp on the competition. Uh, the game itself, and now taking it all away from pol pol politics, um, Betis was lucky. I really have to say that Betis was lucky. I think Zenit uh, had chances and had a late goal. That was takeaway. Yes, there was a step on, but I have to say uh, this seemed like a minuscule foul in many, many, in, in many ways. Betis just did not play Betis like yesterday hit was the post. But there was always this nervousness around them that, you know, we have the lead and da 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 da. And yeah, didn't send it very well. Uh, could, could, could have gotten an equalizer there. Braga makes up within a half uh, the deficit that they had against Sheriff. Uh, so uh, that was going then, was, was all headed to penalties. A crazy penalty. Sheriff missing the first three penalties. But then Braga converting the first, first two, but then also starts missing, and then very late, uh, late on uh, last penalty for Braga is converted. Uh, that was a must convert in many, in many ways, but a, a very odd penalty shootout in many, many ways. Um, Napoli against Bar 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 Barcelona. I don't know what Spalletti is thinking. I gotta be honest with you. I think he messed that one up. Not only that he didn't play the uh, his first team score the Cal Cacalli, but also I think the way he set up against Barcelona was not the right thing. Barcelona really taking Napoli to the house uh, and counterattacking. And of course, all the winter tra tra transfers. And now you may, whatever you may want to say, how is it possible that Barcelona can get uh, those players? They got the right players. It is working out for them. It might not look Barcelona-like in many ways because count, count, contract is the last thing that I expect from Barcelona. But it worked. Then now uh, my uh, least favorite player on the squad scored the first goal. That's a, 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 a different story. But the way Obama Young and Torao Red and assist Joao Di Alba, that was great stuff. Uh, also Frank Frank Dion assisted by Ferran Torres. What a beautiful shot to make it 2-2-0. Two, Only an Insignia penalty. Kind of keeps Napoli in play, but uh, Gerard Pique puts it, puts it in. I mean, they had two goals by, by, by the fans when it's 4-1 for Barcelona uh, in the second half. I think it was Obama Young. Another Tarare to Obama. All transfers. Writing was on the wall. The game was dead. And may I say that no, Napoli, please don't ever issue 12 to 13 kit, 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 kits again. This was, we saw another time, another kit. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Play in your home kits at home. Not in a third uh, glorified third th third kit, uh, and then we had the Rangers against, against Dortmund. Where Rangers took um, a lead through a um, Tavernier pen pen penalty, but Dortmund actually had already a big chance through Bay Bellingham, who gets the equalizer. Then when Marlon makes it two one, you actually really had the feeling that this game could tip because Dortmund was that much better in the first half. However. Some nice uh, shifts in the tactic by Giovanni von von Broncos. I, I think he went to three on the back. Um, made the right adjustment. In the second half, it was all Rangers. And the Rangers fully deserving to move on in that game. Uh, they're getting the equalizer. Uh, they even got um, a winning goal that was take, taken away by also one, uh, one of those dubious uh, calls. Yeah, it's a foul, but I don't think it's a clear and obvious error. And so I think the uh, Rangers will, will deserve the win over Dortmund. Dortmund having a horrendous season out of the Cup, out of the Champions League, out of the Europa League. And in the Championship, maybe you're kind of there, but just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't look right. And the, e the equalizer, I, I again thought the way Hummels is defending, it's past his time. So... Um, we will have the draw um, in the afternoon. I will probably, probably do a separate vi video where you have seen uh, here uh, the pots. I, I actually think it's quite interesting. We have a few French team, a few German team, and we have West Ham in there, joined by a pretty good lineup overall, I must say. In the Conference League, we have, of course, Bur Bodeglim continuing against Celtic. Uh, they are great, great, great run. Now, I know that uh, the winners of this round are potential opponents for Lusk in the draw. Bode, I don't want to play. 
Definitely, because this is an opponent where it's gonna be really, really tough. PSV rather disappointing against Maccabi Tel Aviv. That, that's a team that Lusk actually disposed, and I don't think that Lusk is on the same level as PSV at the moment. PSV, a long time, and then we are testing very late on, uh, gets the go-ahead goal. Maccabi Tel Aviv can equalize in the long stoppage time. They cannot get the second goal to put the game into overtime. But to be honest, I would have expected more from PSV, a more decisive result. Partizan uh, dominating Sparta, uh, being having a 2-0 lead, uh, then the uh, red collective where Sparta can pull one back. But that was surprisingly uh, one-sided for Sparta. Not so surprising is that Marseille had it rather one-sided against Karabak. Also Leicester 3-1 at Randas. Also didn't surprise really anyone. Uh, <laughs> what's more surprising were they? Uh, again, the ugly jersey for Leicester. Power against Midtjylland. Tough game. I mean, it really looked like Park is gonna roll over Midtjylland because at the, uh, within 26 minutes they had uh, were in a 2-1 lead. However, what I did not see the game. What I expect is that then Park was hanging back and Midtjylland pushed forward for it for the equalizer and got the e e equalizer and then it was more or less a stalemate in overtime. That's what I would I expect happened. Uh, I don't know if this is what happened. So if you know, please let me know uh, there. But then in the pair pair should that. Um, Park flawless and in a home panel shot or should we have had two panel shooters where the winner uh, that were won at home which doesn't happen that often all penalties flaw flawless uh Maya misses the first of a major and Park are through Slavia also uh, this was a much clearer game as in the first or second the results uh, such as it means two three two wins but they had two uh nil and I think uh three one leads um, so Fenerbahce totally outclassed by Slavia, also a little bit surprising. And then while the result here looks rather decisive, uh, rather close over Vitesse, over, over Rapid, it was 2-0 after 20 minutes. With the only real chance for Rapid happening at the 1-0, at the uh, well, Ljubicic doesn't do much. Vitesse had a goal taken away for offside, had numerous chances. Rapid, very disappointing, not much coming. And showing that their current like their current form of fortune is not that good. So yeah, we had Vitesse moving on, and therefore we get now in the uh, Europa League the following pots. As I said, Lask is in there, so I'm very curious. I don't know whether I want. You know, there is to me there are three big names in there. That's Marseille, PSV, Leicester. Then a few kind of iffy draws and none really where I say this is an easy draw for uh, Lask. So maybe I would like to play against Marseille, Leicester, PSV. Maybe uh, Marseille and Leicester. That would be fun to have that. So yeah, please let me know what you thought about the uh, uh, happenings. Yes, 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 yesterday. Please leave a comment below if you want to add anything to what I've said in this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!